So the next talk is on fine-grained and controlled relighting blockchain, very long title. Uh, chameleon hashing gone attributes based and it is, will be given by Christoph Strix from Austrian Institute of Technology. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, this is joint work with uh, David Diala, Kaiser Melin and Daniel Slamanik. So uh, to motivate the talk, uh, I will give a motivation about editing and rewriting distributed ledgers, why you want to do that. As a solution, I will, uh, I will propose a new cryptographic primitive, which we termed policy-based chameleon hashing, or short PVCH. Um, I will show you instantiation from non-cryptographic building blocks, give you a high-level example for fine-grained redactable transaction in distributed ledgers, and conclude with first first performance evaluations. So uh, there we've seen massive progress beyond Bitcoin in the recent years, but also we know that this was very hyped. So and uh, what we've seen uh, recently, uh, and interestingly, we see signs that the hype is turning into extensive research within the cryptographic community. So there's, there are cryptographic research centers are established, for, ex for example, all over the, all, all over the world. Uh, the CBR in Stanford, CBRC in Aarhus in Denmark, or the Austrian Blockchain Center. Um, and also from a cryptographic point of view, uh, uh, I'm very delighted to see many cryptographic building blocks are applied to distributed ledgers. We, we now see uh, ZK snarks, multi-signatures, verifiable random functions, verifiable delay functions, verifiable secret sharing, threshold signatures, and multi-party computation, to only name a few, uh, see to be adopted. But less research is known in, on rewriting distributed ledgers. So wait, but isn't it a little bit counterintuitive why you want to be a distributed ledger to be rewritable? It is append only and should be immutable. But let me mo motivate this from the practical point of view. And I'll give a few examples on the slides. Um, five years ago, Someone wrote on Reddit, what's happening if someone inserts illegal content into the blockchain? Well, that's a legitimate question, and uh, you would say, okay. And there were one answer was, uh, well, I've put an illegal prime number on the blockchain. Uh, so far, nothing happened. So for you to understand, an illegal number is, is a number you are not allowed to possess or to distribute anywhere, uh, because it can get you into uh, legal trouble, okay, in some, at least in some countries. So, but now it's on a blockchain. So, and the blockchain is distributed on a lot of computers. So, what does it mean for this to have to possess uh, this illegal prime now on your computer? Of course, you can do it also in a good way. Uh, how to make your love letters last forever? Just put it on blockchain because it will. It was published in 2018, 14th of February, on Valentine's Day. And but unfortunately. We have seen a lot of abuse imagery found. This was a Guardian report uh, on the Bitcoin blockchain, and uh, also research was published, published in this direction last year at uh, Financial Crypto, where the authors were saying, okay, uh, we have found content on the, uh, on the Bitcoin blockchain which uh, can get you in trouble. So, of course, you can go ahead and say, okay, just do a hard fork from that on, right? So this is a simple solution, do a hard fork, but it's, uh, it's argued, or we argue at least that it's not really useful and because you have to, have to rewrite the chain from the change point. And uh, if, for example, if the hard fork happens five years ago, you have to rewrite the entire blockchain from that point on. So this motivates authors, uh, Artenese, Magri, Venturi, Andrade from your, uh, the paper from Euro S&P 2017 to rethink immutable distributed ledgers. So we, because we, as, as, as we've seen in an example, this could, there could be illegal and improper content, uh, intellectual property rights are unclear, new version of smart contracts are unclear, and interestingly from a European point of view, that since last year there's the European Union's general data protection regulation, and uh, it's essentially stated that you have to be, you have, you have a right to be forgotten, which means that you can have, you have that your data ha has to, uh, has to be deleted, if you want that. And um, however, the authors argue that the redaction should be raw events, and uh, they propose a solution on the block level. Use the cryptographic technique called chameleon hashing. I will come to that in a minute. 
the replacing the essential ingredients of distributed ledgers, the, ledgers, the hash function. Uh, a co concurrent work and independent work is also done and will be presented in May at security and privacy, and they propose an alternative solution also on block level. In this work, I will focus, I will focus on the transaction level rewriting. So uh, also we have seen that um, uh, prototypes of editable blockchains uh, are available. Accenture debuts a prototype of editable blockchain for enterprise and permissionless system based on the work of Artenese et al. And essentially they were saying that it combines the confidence that comes from immutability with a pragmatism required in an imperfect world. So what is this chameleon hashing? Or to state it differently, finding collusion for hash function if you know a trapdoor. So a primer, the cryptographic ha uh, as a primer, the cryptographic hash functions, which are used extensively and as a central ingredient to distributed ledger technology, for example, in Bitcoin, there's this RIPE and D160, which is, which, is, uh, which is used there. So you have a message, this is depicted here as a green, then you can uh, put this message, message into, uh, into function H, and you, uh, as a result, you get out the fingerprint, and the function has the features that it is one way, collusion resistant. Or is it one way means that uh, if you know the fingerprint, it's hard to get the message back. Collusion resistant means if you know the fingerprint, you, it's hard to find two different messages that map to the same output. And short output means that the fingerprint is much shorter, shorter than the message itself. So chameleon hashing on the other, other side has an additional collusion finding algorithm, which is called here call, which inputs two messages that can be different messages as well and a trapdoor. And this ensures now that if you hash the message, the blue message and the green message, you get the, uh, you get a fingerprint, the same fingerprint. This finger, uh, now the, 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 the hash function has the features that is this one way collision resistor and short, has the short output again, but only if the trapdoor is unknown. So as it turns out, uh, turned out very useful, it was, is, is a very useful cryptographic primitive envisioned by Kravchik and Ravin 19 years ago at this uh, conference, NDSS, and uh, based on a work by Brassard, Schaum, and Crepeau from the 80s. And uh, it has seen a lot of application in many research areas, uh, for example, online, offline, digni uh, digital signatures, tightly secure signatures, sanitizable signatures, identity-based encryption, direct anonymous attestation, distributed hashing, and also as seen from Artenese et al. edited blockchains. The problem here is that with normal chameleon hash functions, you get only a coarse-grained result, which means that if one is in possession of the trapdoor D, all security guarantees are lost. And as we presented in the paper, and also uh, here our main result, uh, this is we termed a policy-based chameleon hashing, which allows a fine-grained hash collision finding. So policy-based chameleon hashing, or short PBCH, enhances chameleon hashing with attributes and access structures or policies. So attributes can be any string, for example, scientist, research, or engineer. Access structures can be seen as Boolean formulas, for example, research and scientist or engineer. And the attributes fulfill an access structure if the Boolean formula evalu evaluates to one or true. So, and this mimics fine-grained collision findings for chameleon hashing, and uh, also we pro provided in a paper the con construction with strong security guarantees. And the policy-based chameleon hashing now has a uh, an, an trapdoor, and trapdoor key, which is associated to a set, an attribute set S. While the hashing algorithm now has, a, has a, 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 an additional input that, which is associated to an access structure A. And the main feature is here that you get fine-grained collision finding if the attribute set fulfills the access structure. So coming to the instantiation of PVCH, um, we combined a chameleon hashing, a variant of chameleon hashing with the female trapdoors and attribute-based encryption to get an instantiation of uh, PVCH. So the first ingredient is chameleon hashing with ephemeral chapters or short chat, uh, where you have uh, um, an additional uh, input to the coll collusion finding algorithm, which is called a female trapdoor. So there's one, for example, you can see it as a long-term trapdoor, TD, and then a female trapdoor, uh, ETD, uh, which is generated during hashing, and this is due to a result of Kamenisch et al. from PKC 2017. And the main feature is here that 
collision finding is possible in, if the long-term trapdoor key and the ephemeral key are present. As a second ingredient, we have attribute-based encryption, or short ABE, which is an enhanced public key crypto primitive. For example, where you, where you um, in the setting here, you, where you want to send a contract to a company, you, you, you search for the company's public key, then you um, encrypt this, the, the contract with the public key, but also under a policy, which is, for example, here, engineer and development. At the company side, you have a trusted authority, which gives out secret keys. And uh, for example, the secret keys are associated to attributes, engineer research, front desk, or engineer and development. And the attribute-based encryption guarantees that only the secret key for the attributes engineer and development can decrypt the ciphertext. So this enables fine-grained one-to-many communication, enforces access control essentially on the cryptographic level, and um, uh, on the downside we have that this trusted authority was just needed to distribute the secret keys. So putting everything together, now the, our collision uh, finding algorithm has a, a trapdoor key which is associated to the ABE secret key for an attribute set S as well as the female trapdoor, which is the outcome, which is, out, which is output by the hashing algorithm, where the hashing algorithm also uh, is now um, encrypting the uh, EDT, the female trapdoor, for an access structure and in the IBE construction for the IBE scheme. And the main feature here is now that collision finding is possible if the ABE secret key yeah, for, the, for, a sec for an attribute set S, fulfills the access structure in A for an encrypted EDD, uh, for an encrypt encrypted EDD. So on the technical side, uh, we have five algorithms. Um, just discussed the main points here. We have the, the, the hash algorithm of the uh, Camille and hashing with a female trap that outputs the, the ETD, and afterwards hashing uses this uh, ephemeral trap to, uh, to encrypt it under the ABE public key and some access structure A. The collusion, collusion, find, collusion finding algorithm decrypts if you have the right secret key for some attributes which fulfills the access structure, get the ETD back and uh, can find collision with that. So um, the female trapdoor ETD can only be accessed with ABE secret key for attributes as set which fulfill the ciphertext access, access structure. So on the evaluation side, and I uh, will give also a high-level example. We have a proof of concept implement implementation. Um, as a first evaluation results, uh, we implemented uh, policy-based policy Camille and hashing for, uh, in, in, in Python uh, based on the Charm framework, uh, which is a cryptographic prototyping framework on, on the laptop PC. We instantiated the ciphertext policy ABE with the very efficient uh, um, ABE scheme from CCS 2017 uh, fame. Uh, we use our own chat implementation and um, we've seen that uh, key gen and hash scale in, in the number of attributes while the adaptation algorithm or the collision finding and uh, uh, verification is uh, constant. Uh, I have to note here that uh, our first evaluation results are implemented under a weaker security variant uh, we use only an NCPA secure ABE scheme. Uh, we can lift that ABE scheme to NCCA security, to the stronger notions, so what you want to have in practice, this will uh, expect to double the hashing algorithm time. So as a higher level example, we were uh, motivated by the, uh, by the Bitcoin blockchain. So we have, for example, here these uh, three blocks, and we want to operate on the block BI. So uh, there's, there's this field of previous, previous hash, prefresh, hash, which is, is the hash of the previous blocks, and um, the, the, the Merkle tree. Now down the leaf at the Merkle tree, we have that uh, we have th four transactions, TI1 to TI4, and we want to uh, make uh, TI1 uh, redactable or editable. So what we can use, we use TI1 to, to put a um, policy-based chameleon hash on that, and uh, uh, put the results lower, let, uh, lower letter H into, into um, capital letter H to form A, and um, this gets done computed to, to form the, the TX root value of the Merkle tree. So, and um, then we will uh, 
Yeah, exactly. We can, we can exchange the, the, the transaction ti1 prime with an, gives the same hash again as, is, uh, as the correctness by the hashing algorithm. So to conclude, uh, I presented editing, read writing DLTs as an important aspect to consider. This is possible on the block level, transaction level. Uh, proposed uh, policy based chameleon hashing, uh, policy based chameleon hashing to allow fine grained uh, rewriting transac transaction level, which yields the first in instantiation of its kind. Uh, presented performance evaluation, first performance evaluation, high level example, and uh, details on a full version. And the open question now is can we can uh, efficient integration in a real distributed ledger setting? And with that, uh, I thank you okay, for the attention. Thank you very much. We have time for a half a question. Half a question. Hi, thank you for your talk. I was wondering whether. Please identify yourself. Uh, Maria Postelaika from ETH Zur. I think the microphone doesn't work. Please uh, yeah, use that microphone, please. Yeah. I think that doesn't work. Okay, okay. So, hi, thank you for your talk. Uh, I was wondering whether you, somebody can actually l use it against the blockchain. Like you mean uh, this technique to use it against? Yeah. Um, now with this technique you can, of course, exchange the transaction to whatever you want, yes. So if this is, and you get other, other guarantees that you possibly do not uh, see the difference if this was, is this is a redacted or was redacted or not. So yeah. You, what you're ever defining by against, using it against, but uh, you can now exchange something which gives you the same hash, you know, the collision, yeah. We can take it offline, I think. Mm -hmm. The question was very short, the answer will need a longer one. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. For thank, the you. Talk. thank you. Thank you.